Well, following Toyota's latest announcement, the revolutionary hydrogen fuel burning car, Dave takes it on, dives deep into hydrogen technology in Wednesday's regular tech series for those viewers who prefer the nitty gritty nuts and bolts approach. Well, it seems to be getting a bit of a pattern with Toyota. They announce a brand new internal combustion engine that is a Tesla killer, will wipe out all EVs overnight with its power and efficiency. And then they announce their new battery technology that will give a range of a thousand miles and that'll totally destroy Tesla. And now their brand new hydrogen burning engine that will kill off EVs forever. Does anyone else see a bit of a pattern developing with these announcements? Well, these launches and many others have been touted for decades. Always something new, but then actually just same old, same old. Apart from their ICE cars and hybrids, what has Toyota actually launched new recently? Oh, oh yeah, they're going to copy Tesla with their Giga castings and lowering production costs so that their ICE cars will destroy EVs for good. Oh yeah, and they will introduce robots into the production line. Proper people like walking, talking robots. Hmm. Wonder where they got that from. Well, I've heard it all before. So I'm going to ignore the sales side of hydrogen as a fuel, or should I say total lack of sales? No, let me correct that. I can't ignore one sales fact. The US federal government is subsidising all EVs to the tune of up to $7,500. The Japanese government is subsidising hydrogen fuel cars like the Toyota Mirai with subsidies between $50,000 and $100,000. <laughs> Enough said. So. What is hydrogen burning engine? What's it all about? Well, in many ways it makes total sense. Toyota have been exceedingly successful, if you ignore the world's leading debt the company has, in making ice cars that people want. The Corolla has been, well, correct that, had been the best-selling car in the world. It's now been passed by an EV. So, if diesel is now just about finished, sales have crashed to a record low, and petrol cars also now have been surpassed in many markets by EVs, plus they're also likely to be banned totally at some point in the future, then a simple switch to hydrogen as a fuel makes a lot of sense. Carry on making their ice cars, just switch the fuel from fossil to hydrogen. Well, well, remember in my younger days, the popularity of LPG cars, liquid petroleum gas, seeing LPG pumps at many petrol stations. Well, it's a simple fact that an internal combustion engine runs quite happily on gas. After all, the petrol that is injected into the cylinder effectively vaporises. But LPG is just another fossil fuel, so it does release various noxious carcinogenic toxic gases, and it's totally frowned upon by governments. But hydrogen? Now, that's a different story. Hydrogen is a great clean green fuel that gives off almost no gases. The main waste product is pure water, though having passed through an exhaust system, I don't think I'd drink it. So research into this is logical, well, to Toyota at least, because the answer is not so logical. Despite being around since 1966 when GM, yeah, yet another green vehicle launched to match the first modern EV, they launched the Chevrolet Electrovan to an instant flop. There are today just a few dozen hydrogen fuel stations in America and probably still less than 100 in the whole world. Petrol stations, EV charging points are now already vastly widespread and still growing, but hydrogen stations have totally failed. So they're faced with a chicken and egg scenario. Who will buy a hydrogen powered car if there are no filling stations? And who will build a massive extensive network of hydrogen fueling stations if there are no cars to finance them? Then it was seriously touted for a while for lorries, or semis as they call them in the States, after Bill Gates said it was impossible to make an electric lorry with a decent range and load capacity because of the weight of the battery. Well, it's not only Tesla who now make EV lorries, they really are taking off recent independent trials by real lorry drivers in real world conditions over more than a week of actual deliveries saw the Tesla Semi come out totally on top. But a look at the technology reveals the reasons, the real reasons why hydrogen is on a path to nowhere. 
and there are two key factors. First, making hydrogen. Well, as the lightest element in existence, it is the most abundant element in the universe. There's just none here on Earth. Hydrogen loves bonding with other elements. Water, H2O. Methane gas, CH4. And alcohol, C2H5OH. All contain large amounts of hydrogen. It's just bonded to other elements. And producing it cleanly is really easy. Just take electricity, hydrolyse water, it releases oxygen and hydrogen, both of which are valuable gases. And here we run into the first problem. Nobody has enough spare electricity anywhere in the world at the moment, even for experimental hydrogen production. After all, crashing of the national grid due to over-demand by EVs is a popular cry from the EV haters. We don't actually have enough spare capacity to make even a tiny fraction of the amount we will eventually need if hydrogen-powered cars take off. And if we did somehow get enough spare, electrolysis is significantly by far the dearest method of producing hydrogen. Absolutely massively so. It won't happen en masse. Well, to overcome that issue, the only answer, both short-term and long-term, is to switch the oil refineries, which have absolutely masses of excess power, courtesy of all the fossil fuels sloshing around, <clears throat> plus the equipment is almost already, already there, to get started to making blue hydrogen from the natural gas they already handle, methane, CH4. And it's cheap, and the massive refineries they could use are shortly about to become redundant. But using fossil fuels to make hydrogen produces more pollution than it can ever possibly save, way more, dramatically more. Plus, the oil companies will still destroy the environment looking for fresh natural gas supplies, transported to refineries, then transported to hydrogen filling stations, all using even more fossil fuels. The CO2 chain is absolutely staggering. But the second issue is even greater. A well-designed electric motor is around 99% efficient at turning electricity into movement. Waste products are a bit of noise and a bit of heat. An internal combustion engine, ICE, is typically 20 to 30% efficient at turning fuel into movement. Yeah, I know they claim the engines are slightly more efficient, but you've then got to turn that heat energy into movement, and that burns up more efficiency. The waste products of burning a fuel, any fuel, inside a cylinder, are also noise and heat, but absolutely masses of heat. So much heat that the engine block must be drilled with a network of channels through which you must pump a coolant. That pump uses energy too. You then need to stick a huge radiator on the front to get rid of that heat, which your fuel burning has just produced. Plus, hydrogen burns hotter than vaporised petrol, so aluminium cylinder heads are out, as they discovered with LPG. There were actually few, if any, 100% LPG cars, they were nearly all dual fuel, and you had to run petrol through them regularly, or they would just burn through the valves at a frightening pace. Not so strange, they're not more efficient when over 50% of all the heat you produce inside the cylinder is waste that costs you money to get rid of. And then hydrogen is far, far heavier than petrol to carry around. Yeah, I know, hydrogen weighs almost nothing, but the fuel tanks you need to contain the huge pressures that you need to store it at now take up about half the weight of the car, unlike a little plastic fuel tank. Hydrogen made from methane, extracted by drilling, is absolutely the best possible fuel of the future for one reason only, the oil giants. If petrol and diesel finally disappear, which they themselves now predict, what do they do with their old oil drilling rigs, their oil and gas pipelines, their refineries and their petrol stations? You see, they will be liable for cleaning up the disaster of a mess they've already made over the last century at a time of plummeting sales. If they could only find a way to keep them running for a few more decades. That is why the support for hydrogen cars keeps recurring keeps getting fresh investment money, regular as clockwork, nothing to do with the technology, the oil giants do not want to shut down. So sorry, spoiler alert, you will shut down. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy our Deeper Tech episodes released every Wednesday. If you have, please subscribe so that you'll be notified when they launch. I'm Dave.